That means it's time to talk to John Giles. Good evening, John. Evening, Nathan. So we have a big game tonight. Manchester City against Tottenham gets underway at 8 o'clock. City yep. A points behind Arsenal now after Arsenal beat Spurs at the weekend. Uh, 2-0 victory. Very convincing performance yet again. Are they answering every question you'd have about Arsenal right now? So far, so good, Nathan. No doubt about that. Uh, I thought they... Well, there's a lot to, long time to go yet, as we know. A lot of matches to mm. play. Uh, but they're a good young team and they're doing really, re- really, really well in the big matches that sometimes you expect you know, younger players to, to not do so well. Mm. But they're doing it. That was a big match for them last week to, to win it the way they, they won it. Uh, you know, Spurs did come back on them in the second half, but they kept them out, kept them out pretty well. I think, you know, Arteta is, is, uh, is doing a big job there. It's hard to believe it's nearly 20 years since Arsenal last won the Premier League title. And for a lot of these, it will be their first time in a title challenge. And do you feel experience is important or the lack of experience could be something that could cost Arsenal over the next few weeks or actually when you look at that performance against Tottenham is there a, a maturity greater than their ages which would suggest um, well it depends on the young players Nathan you know if you've got a group of young players that really have it and re- really are genuinely good uh, it's, it's, it, it can be very very good for them and they can handle it mm. Um you know, the, the, I think the worst thing happened to players getting experienced players who have been through that and didn't didn't come come out of it well. You know, it lives it lives it lives with you then if you do that. But these are young players. The manager's doing well with them. They're winning the matches uh, and the big matches like last week, where you would expect them. This is a, a, a local derby at Spurs um, for them to go and play in the mature way that they did. Because they, they, we do, they went ahead, uh, sorry, with two goals, so we know at one stage. But Spurs came at them in the second half, mm. and they responded really, really well. I, I think, you know, I, no, I think the, these young players with uh, the manager are going to be okay in that particular way, Nathan. Those three behind the attacker in Ketia at the moment, Jesus before that, so Martinelli on the left, Saka on the right, and particularly Odegaard, who's captaining the side, playing in that mm. uh, number 10 role, drops a bit deeper at times. In terms of his attributes as a as a midfielder, as an attacking midfielder, like the talk of him maybe being the best player in the Premier League right now. Is he is he on that level that you can talk about of being the best midfielder on a De Bruyne level? Um, yeah, yeah, he's very good. He's, he's more central... Um, Midfield player than than De Bruyne is uh, Nathan. Uh, the, the only doubt I would have him would, would be Xhaka. Has he not answered again any of those questions? Is is it a different Xhaka we're seeing this season? Well, he's better, but he, he still did something last week which was stupid. He went down as if he was hurt, and and then he's he's getting into a, actually I think he got into a bit of a row with the sports manager. He, 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 he's always likely to explode, Nathan. And when you get into the big matches, and as they will as they go along, uh, it's not the it's not the temperament to have. I just doubt him. I mean, I mean, he's a lot better than he was. He's calmed down a lot, but not not quite as much as he should, in my opinion. From Tottenham's but, point of view, does does Conte need to just stop complaining and concentrate on getting his team on the pitch performing? Um, well, I think he's doing that. I think he's, I think Spurs have been very, very good. Uh, is he right to, to complain? I don't know. I think he has. I think he, he definitely has complaints mm. uh, with the with the um, the Spurs chairman. Board. Yeah, you know, I think he's. I think it's a genuine complaint. I mean, if you look at all the other teams, Arsenal are, are, are going big now to buy a player a lot of money. Chelsea don't know where they're getting the money from. You know, Man, uh, Man City might. They, they have the resources to do it. But, like, Conte has done, I think he's done a tremendous job at Spurs. And he needs to be backed. You know, he, he doesn't have the players. But if you look at the centre half, uh, sorry, the second half last week, now, and Arsenal were very, very good, really good. But Spurs made a go of it in the second half. You know, a lot of other teams would have collapsed in that situation. I think he's done a terrific job. I don't think he's, I don't think he's been backed. He should be backed. All the other teams are backed in, in it. In big money, uh, and what he's saying is, I can't do, I can't do, and compete with these teams without getting players in. Should he be saying that uh, 
in press conferences? Does it not undermine the players that he has on the training ground every day if they're listening to their manager constantly in the media saying, my players aren't good enough? Um, I don't... I, they certainly wouldn't be happy about it. Mm. But, but it hasn't stopped them playing for him, that's for sure. Like, he's playing a public game with Mr. Levy, or Lee Levi, is that what we Levy, call him? Levy, yeah, Daniel Levy. Levy. He's playing a game with him. He's trying to put pressure on him. He's finally saying to supporters, look, we need to get players in. And I'm not getting any response here. Mm. Right? Because he's actually saying something about leaving at the end of the season, which I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if he did. If, if, if things don't happen here and he doesn't get a back in, uh, Nathan, in my opinion... He'll go. I mean, he won't. He won't be. He won't be long about getting a job. So he's he's in a position that look either back me up or leave me, and uh, or I leave. And I, I don't blame him for that because he hasn't been backed up at all in relation to the, the to, to the other clubs that that he's expected to compete with. Huge game at the weekend uh, with Manchester United going to Arsenal. Uh, United uh, dropped a couple of points last night, but the victory against Manchester City. Uh, firstly, the offside. Uh, you've watched games for uh, quite a while, John. Is uh, Are you fully understanding the offside rule as it is at the moment? Um, I think I do, Nathan. <laughs> was, that a, was that offside or was uh, that a legitimate goal for Bruno Fernandes last Saturday? Well, it was a, it was a legitimate goal for the rules that we have, Nathan. What they've introduced now, I think it's it's it's, it's the world body mm. uh, has, has done it. Is is that uh, like in my day from last week's match, Nathan? Uh, I think uh, FIFA the rules, right? In my day, if the ball the player is in an offside position like the Manchester United player was last week, the flag goes up and it's offside. Right? Very simple. Now what the, what they're saying is, he's okay where he is, as long as he doesn't touch the ball in the attack or, 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 or impede on the opposition. Well, that's, that's become nonsense. And I think whoever has introduced this new rule doesn't know anything about football. Mm. I don't think it's a referee. I think this is an association. Say this is what this is what we do. But in my opinion, it's madness. When I mean, you saw Rashford last week, he was running after the ball. How do you know? Like once a player is on the pitch, he's got a good chance of being interfered with play. Nathan. So the referee and uh, the VAR decided that Rashford hadn't touched the ball, uh, which is clear. Yeah. But also, and this is the key thing, that he didn't have any impact on a City player. Yeah. Did he have yeah. any impact on a City player? Well, he's bound to. He's chasing the ball. So the, the, the City... The, uh, you see, what happened there, Nathan, when, before anything happened, the, 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 the City defenders could see that Rashford was in an offside position. So they stayed out, right? And uh, they're assuming that if, if the ball is played in, he's going to be offside. Mm. Right, that's that's what they're assuming. You have to. You can't just stop. You know what I mean? But anyway, uh, there's no doubt that Rashford did run after the ball. He didn't touch it, but that 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 brings everybody into play. And he's, I think, he was definitely able to guard the ball from the, the city defenders. But if a player's in an offside position, he's in an offside position as soon as the ball is kicked. I mean, whoever's making these rules. I mean, they, they mustn't know anything about football, Nathan. It's, it's absolutely stupid. I mean, it should be very simple. If he's in an offside position, the ball's played, the linesman puts his flag up, and he's offside. It's, it's just, it's just, it doesn't make sense. Mm. And Envar is in enough trouble, you know. Mm. But, Without making it more complicated. Yeah, well, it, 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 I mean, it, it, to be fair to the, the lads that made the decision there the other day, uh, you know, as far as they were concerned, they weren't breaking any rules. Now, you could say, well, Rashford made a run. He was interfering with play. Uh, they they could have put it right. VAR could have put it right after after they looked at it. But, but, but as far as they were concerned, Rashford didn't break any rules. What about but the... But if he's in an offside position when the ball is played, Nathan, mm. he's in an offside position. Yeah. 
What about the Manchester United performance then? Uh, quite a turnaround from the 6-3 defeat at the Etihad. Uh, a lot of attention, understandably, on Casemiro and the impact he's had on that Manchester United midfield and what a loss he'll be against Arsenal. He was sort of the forgotten man in the way of that Real Madrid midfield. Have you been surprised just how big an impact he's had at, at United? Well, he's a very good player, and he has been a very good player for, for a number of years, uh, Nathan. There's no doubt he's a good, experienced player. Uh, and he, he definitely has improved them. Um, I mean, he, sli- he slipped up last night in, the, in the, 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 the Palace match, the silly free kick he gave away to get the yellow card and to put him out of the game for Saturday. Um, I thought he could have done a bit better, knowing the position he was in. in that, But he's been a very good player for them. Mm. He's been, yeah, he's been, he's been a good player for years, Nathan. In a certain role, you know, he's he's good, particularly a good defensive midfield player. I mean, going forward, he's 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 A to B. He's good. He doesn't give the ball away. He doesn't produce any sensational uh, passes. But he's but he's been a very very good player for United. As somebody they needed in that position. Uh, interesting decision by Pep Guardiola tonight. He's dropped Kevin De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva, and Phil Foden. Is he scrambling a bit at the moment, Guardiola, just to find any sort of eleven that can get a bit of form together? Well, he's he's, he's always made changes, Nathan. You know, and I think he definitely overdoes that. I think he's looking for something in the game all all the time that nobody else can see. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, like the, the game is complicated enough. I mean, the idea of a manager is is to is to Use common sense. All the players can understand what they're doing, and because it's a very complicated game. But I think looking at him, like he's he's looking at the situation. Well, I'll try that. I'll try that. I mean, for example, he's got the got the two fullbacks virtually playing midfield, and he, he seems to be a character that. Uh, well, I'll try that. That that's uh, I've got that. You know, it, it's too complicated. I mean, the idea of a manager. Is to is to first of all, football is a very complicated game, and what the managers are real thing, they reduce it to to, to simplicity. That's what that's what anybody is, is is good at anything, Nathan. Like, like if you watch somebody making a table, for example, you say, Jesus, that's good. I, I could do that. So you try it, and it's very difficult to do. And football is the same. Football is a very complicated game, and the great managers reduce it to simplicity for the players that they have. I think what's happening with Guardiola is complicating it. Actually complicating it. I mean, he's leaving those players out tonight. I mean, they're some three of his best players. Now, maybe he thinks the other might be a bit tired and that, but I, they, even on the weekend, you know, like the two fullbacks were all over the place. And he does that regularly. I mean, you go back to the, was it the European Cup final last year. Mm-hmm. He played without a midfield. And, and, and he seems to think there's, there's something in the game. There's a secret here. There's a secret there. And in my opinion, there is no secret in football. The manager knows his stuff. He reels the best players to their abil- that has the ability to do the job that he wants. And don't complicate it after that. Keep it simple. He's got the players, but I think he makes too many changes, expects too much for them. I do this, I'll do that. And uh, I think he's paying the price for that. Uh, it looked like Jurgen Klopp had discovered the secret for a couple of years, uh, but he's searching once again at the moment. Uh, Liverpool were absolutely battered at the weekend by Brighton. And similar to the Brentford game, you sort of knew in advance the sort of challenge that Brighton would bring, and Liverpool looked totally ill-equipped to deal with it. They looked out on their feet. They didn't look in any way prepared for what Brighton were going to bring at them. Uh, Klopp looks a little bit lost right now. Well, he's, he's certainly in, in, in a certain amount of trouble, Nathan, and it, it's always difficult in football to know what is the reason. You know, we, we can only guess at it, but what, what I do know about football, if there's problems, it manifests itself on the pitch. That's where we can all see it. Uh, and Liverpool have had a really bad time. Is it? I'm only guessing now, is it because they're going to, it looks like they're going to sell the club? Has, has Salah got an increase that the other players are, are not, uh, not keen on? But think, I mean, he said himself, what he, I just wrote it down last week, and what he said, it was bad, really bad. I can't remember a worse game, not only with Liverpool. Uh, you know, this is really a low point. Uh, you know, and, and people are saying, well, the midfield, you know, they need players in midfield. Maybe they do. But when you're playing, when uh, it was the Brighton that beat them 3 0, Nathan, I mean, if you look at the midfield players that Liverpool have, I mean, I, I bet any money you'd get three of them would get in the Brighton team. 
instead of the players they have. So we th- there's something wrong at Liverpool, and it's very, very difficult to know exactly what. Now, they did get a result last night, as mm. we know, uh, in, in the Cup at uh, Wolverhampton. But it's, it's not the Liverpool that we, we're, we're, we've been used to for the last six or seven years. Uh, quick word on Leeds. Uh, they got a win last night in the FA Cup, uh, 5-2 against Cardiff, beaten by Villa at the weekend, though. Uh, an impressive performance. Probably should have got more from the game. They have a new superstar at Ellen Road. Uh, this youngster, Nanto, that was a, an incredible goal he scored in the first minute last night. Was outstanding against Villa as well. Yeah. Are you, are you any more convinced by what Jesse Marsh is trying to do? Well, well, it's a match they, to be on. I don't want to be hard on him, but it's a match they should have won last night. Mm. I mean, Cardiff are, uh, uh, haven't have had trouble in in the, the, the second division, you know. So it's a match that you, you would expect them to win. Now they won it well. I mean, the two goals way near the finish, uh, but they, but they won it well. There was good things in it. Bamford's come back. They took two goals really, really well. Uh, what do you call it? Like Nanto, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Look, he's a really good player. He's only a young fella. Uh, a very aggressive lad himself for the, for the left winger. Took his, took his goals well. So they won well last night. Um, but, you know, I, I think he likes them to go, go, go. And in some matches like last night, they, they scored the goals that they deserved to score. But I, I think... They, they don't know how to control the game, Nathan. You know, it's go, go, go all the time. But I think, and I think they'll concede goals. I think they'll score goals. I think they'll concede goals. Uh, I think he could do better with some of the, def- the, the defenders. I think mm-hmm. if we got a couple of new defenders in, I think we'll do them a lot of good. Uh, but when they're going well, they go really well. And last night, it was a good match for them to, to come into. They haven't been winning matches. I thought they were a bit unlucky against uh, Villa last week. I thought they deserve at least a draw on it, um, but they, they 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 will be difficult to beat in in some of the matches they play in. I think they will get out of trouble. Okay, so you're feeling you're feeling more confident now that they'll survive. Yes. All right. And yeah, Patrick well, Bamford back as well. You look at all the so. teams down there, Nathan. Mm. There's about five or six teams in trouble. Yeah, there's a lot of clubs in crisis right now. Yeah, yeah, and I, I don't think I don't think Leeds are in crisis at all. I think they will pick up from it. But at the, at the moment, unless they get a couple of really good defenders in, they will they will lose goals, Nathan. But but I think they I think they will keep out of trouble.